If you have your Bibles, turn to um, Luke chapter 1, verse 28, and uh, we're going to be in the Gospels a good bit this evening, and um, my message is called A Kingdom Without End. How many know that the kingdom of Jesus is without end? And we are in that kingdom, right? Who do we feel um, owns the church? Yeah, Jesus, God, whatever you want to say, right? Does anybody think that, that I own a church? No, God owns it. So this is his kingdom on the earth. Remember, when you got born again, you were brought into the kingdom. You have a born again spirit that's a new creation. And the Bible says that though the outward man is perishing, now that's not a bad confession, right? You know, I'm gonna say, I didn't say the outward man's getting sick. And sicker, but the outward man does perish, right? But the inward man, the Bible says, is renewed every day. So you are in the kingdom of God. But if you don't know that you are in the kingdom of God and you don't um, walk like it and, and know what, what your potential is, you're going to be, um, you're going to come below your potential, and you'll probably walk more in the flesh or more in the natural and it might even end up being a carnal Christian. You don't want to be a carnal Christian. A carnal Christian is one that's led by their flesh and led by their emotions or their soul. They're contacted in the natural world. That, that's, you're not going to get the fruit of the Spirit that way. But if you know what is available to you, and you know what God has for you, you're going to rise up to that level and you're going to go for it. That's why I pre what I appreciate about this church. We've been taught f now f for all these years that our potential. That's why we led you in, in receiving the Holy Ghost, because that's available to you. Amen. That's big. That's a big deal. Right. I mean, that is, that's not something that's sort of just like a little small thing. No, that is a, what do they say, a game changer. And it's so sweet. And it's so, um, so much of a, of, of a benefit and a blessing to us. But if we don't know all that we are in Christ, we don't know our potential, we're not going to reach for it. You know, I heard a story about a, uh, um, this school that had... Um, classes moving up to like the middle school two classes and they separated these classes they, they did it every year they had the um above average class the students that were considered to be above average they had them labeled and they would go into a, a, a the teachers that were prepared for the above average or the exceptional students and they had different curriculum different teachers and different thoughts about them and then they had a class that was called the below average, average or below or not so much potential. And those kids, every year when they came up from the grade school, went to the middle school, they would go into a class that, that the teachers were prepared to teach below average children, basically. I don't know why they do it, but they label you like that. Anybody remember taking those tests and then they tell you, that based on your test, this is what you can do in life? Uh, that's the world. I don't think much of the world at all. I don't think much of their system. I don't think much of any of it because it's not godly most of the time. And so, um, but somebody thought, well, let's switch these kids up and not tell the teachers. Let's put the kids that are labeled below average into the exceptional class. And remember, the teachers don't know it. So these teachers are sharp and they're prepared. They think they're getting the exceptional children. So they got a whole curriculum, a whole set of ideas and standards and, and more expectation of those kids. And let's put the higher average kids um, down into the low expectation class, the below average class where those teachers are. Guess what happened? It didn't take long that the below average kids that got put in the above average class and system, they outperformed the above average kids. Why? All expectation, all what was said, all what was driven into them. It's the same way. You can be an above average, high performance Christian if you know that that's what's expected of you. It's nothing to do with your natural talent. It's nothing to do with your background. 
It's nothing to do with anything but God's will for your life. And if you know that, and you know the power of the Word and, and the power of the Spirit, and you know that, that God expects and wants great things from us, you'll go for it. And you got to get in a church that teaches it too. If you walk around all day and all you hear is, I'm just an old sinner, saved by grace. I'm just an old sinner. And you get no expectation, no, no um, drive, well, then you're going you're gonna to be down in that area, and that's not such a good place to be, is it? So look at Luke chapter 1, verse 28. Now, this is when the angel Gabriel came to Mary and um, let her know that she was going to have a son, a, a miraculous son. And, uh, but up until this time, up until Gabriel came to Mary, there had been 400 years of silence. 400 years, the, the prophets did not speak at all. So from 1,500 years to 400 years before Jesus came, the, the Old Testament was taught and, 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 and written and recorded, and then 400 years of silence, and then all of a sudden, here comes Gabriel. Things are about ready to break loose here. Look what he says here in verse 28. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou art highly favored of the Lord, and the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And verse 29, And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Look at verse 32. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. So there is no end to the kingdom of Jesus, is there? Well, that's the kingdom you're in. You know, the Bible says God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. You're not going to be in the kingdom of God when you get to heaven. You're in it now. Amen. You're in it now. You are God's son now. You are God's daughter now. You are a joint heir with Jesus Christ right now. So you know what? You better act like it. You better walk like it. You better stop putting your head down because you're running into too many walls. I don't know. You better keep your head up, keep your eyes forward and say, I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I am a child of the Most High God. I'm in a kingdom without end. And you train your, yourself to read the scriptures that way, right? Train yourself to read your scriptures that God loves you unconditionally and Jesus died for you and you're, you've been cleansed. Your, your past doesn't exist anymore. If you are a born-again believer, you don't have a past. You only have a future. Amen? We have to understand that because that's what the Word of God says. Because you have to know that. Because what the devil's going to do when you start trying to get close to God and start moving in and you start feeling good about yourself, he's going to come to you with thoughts. And he's going to try to remind you of your past. He's going to try to remind you of something. That's when you have to know that you have been cleansed. You've been washed by the blood. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. You've been washed by the blood. Those things don't exist. They don't, they don't exist. Your past and your failures do not exist anywhere but in your mind. They don't exist in God's mind. Sometimes they exist in other people's minds. But most importantly, does not exist in God's mind. He does not look at you and see you like that. 
Religion doesn't like that. I imagine if some, a religious person watches this later, they just turn me off. That's okay. Be a below average <laughs> believer then. And go ahead and walk around thinking that, that stuff. Well, what I'm telling you is the truth. First John 1 John 1.9 says, if you confess your sins, this is talking to believers because we're not perfect. You have free access to God to keep going to God, keep talking to God, keep going to God. He says that he will cleanse you, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. God's grace and mercy is renewed to you every day. That'll make you an exceptional believer. Because the devil's only power is deception. He's a deceiver. He's a good at it. Or he's a liar. And he'll lie to you. And he'll get you thinking about your own insecurities and your own failures. And he'll get you, he'll bring the stuff up back when, you, way back. If you let him, I don't let him. Because I know in whom I have believed. And I know what the word of God says. Because if you go back there and you live in that old stuff that Jesus paid for, you're going you're gonna to be defeated. Because you will not have any faith. Not because faith comes out of the heart, right? Comes out of your spirit. You'll not have the ability to believe God for anything because your own spirit will convict you, your own heart. You got to be bigger than that. I want you to be successful. Amen? Look at John 18 36. You know, that's the name of our church, is it not? Freedom in Christ. I like that name. Amen. You know how we got that name? The Lord gave it to mom. When they were starting a church, it came into her spirit. Freedom in Christ. Now, religious people, they don't like that name. They think we should be called first something of something. Or whatever. <laughs> or now nah, we're free in Christ. Amen. We are free from sin. Amen. We're not saying we are free to sin. Paul said that that the law of the spirit of life has set us free. From the law of sin and death. There's a new law working in us. It's the spirit of God. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. That law has set us free. Amen. Come on now. That's why it says in Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, you got to go boldly to the throne. You got to go boldly. You're not going boldly if you're thinking it's about you and your failures. Why, why do we go boldly? Because Jesus is there waiting on you your high priest and it says when you come you it's a throne of grace uh oh and you'll get help and mercy in your time of need that's how you become a high functioning christian because the more time you spend in god's presence the more the more all that stuff washes off of you it has to be that way you have to know that jesus christ has set you free you have to know so that you can go into God's presence unhindered. You're not going to be perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to, you're a human. But it does not change the fact that, that the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free Amen. from the law of sin and death. Look at um, John 18, verse 35. This is when Jesus is on trial. And Pilate answered and said, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? So he's saying, look, it's your nation and your chief priest is the reason you're here. And Jesus says in verse 36, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So Jesus is like, you got the wrong guy. You got the wrong idea. 
I'm not from this world. My kingdom is not of this world. I'm from the other kingdom. I came from the Father. I came from heaven. That's my kingdom. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. That's Jesus. The kingdom of God came to the earth in the form of Jesus. So he's like, Pilate, I'll just paraphrase him. I ain't of the Jews. I ain't of that. I'm not, the kingdom of this world is not my kingdom. Isn't he saying that? Now, he was a Jew. I'm not saying that, but that worldly kingdom is not his kingdom. Look at verse 37. And Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And so he's setting it straight here, and he's setting it, 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 it uh, plain to, to be that he is the spirit of truth. He, uh, he is the truth. He is a king. Is he your king? He's the king of kings and lord of lords. Everybody's going to meet God. We've already met him. Some people are going to meet him in death. And that's going to be a bad time to meet him. Because if they stand before the Lord, God Almighty, without the blood of Jesus applied to their life, they are forever doomed. Because only by Jesus Christ can man be saved. Right? He is God's kingdom here on this earth to open the way for us to get into to the kingdom of God. Look at Luke chapter um, 17, verse 20. So he, you know, Jesus throughout the scriptures went back and forth with the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the teachers of the law, Pharisees and Sadducees and lawyers of the law. He just went back and forth and, and just, you know, they tried to confound him and they tried to make him confused. And you can't, you can't confuse him, right? Amen. They tried to confuse the living word, Jesus, with, with the written word. I mean, with, with the scriptures. He frustrated them, did he not? But look at verse 20, Luke 17, 20. It says, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo, here, or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Or the Amplified Bible says, he says it this way, the kingdom of God is among you because of my presence. So you're looking for the kingdom of God to come in some other type of way or fashion with this big to-do. And he's saying, look, the kingdom of God is here among you because I'm here. How loving is God? He brought his kingdom down to the earth in the form of his son. This gets better. Look at Matthew 16, 13. Now, this is an interesting story. Um, Jesus takes these uh, disciples to a place called Caesarea Philippi. Demonic, beyond demonic places. It's a big mountain with a big hole in it. For hundreds and hundreds of years, they did baby sacrifices uh, all along the walls or, or, or false gods. You can still visit that place today. Look it up. You can Google it. Caesarea Philippi. The, the, the gates of Hades is what it's called. The, literally, the gates of hell is right there. Jesus took the disciples there because he wanted to give them an object lesson. How many know that Jesus liked to go on field trips? <laughs> it would have, I've read somewhere where it took him like, it would have took him a half a day to walk there. He just walked there to prove a point. Guys, I'm going to take you to the most demon-infested place on the earth, and I'm going to say something brand new that has never been said in the history of the world. I'm going to bring a new word out and show you something, and I'll show you what that is. But I was reading a uh, uh, Jewish, I don't know, scholar, 
And uh, he said, I don't believe Jesus, no self-respecting Jew would ever go to that place. I don't believe Jesus actually went there. Well, I'm sorry, the Word of God says he went there. And Jesus wasn't no ordinary Jew. Jesus wasn't a Pharisee. He was the, he was the, the kingdom of God on the earth. He was to be the firstborn among the brethren. So he's a completely different entity, right? Yeah, some rabbi or some Jewish guy that followed the law and didn't understand the heart of God, they're never going there. Jesus wasn't like that. And he went there. Look, look, look what he said here in, in uh, Matthew 16, verse 13. It says that when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Hold a second. And verse 14, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah. Um, what's that? Oh, <laughs> And others, or Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. So they, they're saying, like, they're saying all kinds of thing that, things about who you are. And um, verse 15, he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Thou art the anointed one. You know, Jesus, if you say Jesus Christ, Christ isn't Jesus' last name. It's who he is. It's, he is the anointed one. He is the one that was sent to save the world from sin. That's what it means to be saved, right? What's it mean to be saved? Rescued. Rescued from what? Satan or darkness. Taken out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. But you know, in verse 15, when he said, who do men say that I am? You know, he's still asking that question today. Who do you say he is? And Simon, of course, said he was Christ. But look at verse 17. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. That's a good deal, isn't it? God the Father himself is revealing Jesus. Look at verse 18. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock... Now here's the term that never used, wasn't ever used in, in a religious type context. He says, upon this rock I will build my church church is in the, is the word ecclesia and it was a it was a um a word that meant like a city government or a, or a city a governing um group of people in cities like a like a or it could be a school board or or board of directors or or things like that that's what that was ecclesia it was a governing body for certain areas jesus said his church was going to be a governing body on the earth what are they going to govern? What are they going to take care of? Well, God's kingdom on the earth. Come on now. That's, this, that's why this place is God's. We are God's people. We are the church. We are the ecclesia. We are the governing body here for this time, this place, and we're governing for God. Amen? I mean... And he said this, look at this, the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So when he said the gates of hell or the gates of Hades, that was the name of the place where they were at. That, there's his object lesson. Look at verse 19. And I will give unto thee, unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. You got the keys. Are you going to use them? Look at this. And whatsoever... Thou shalt bind on the earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth, shall be loosed in heaven. We have the power. Did Jesus say that they would have the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Do you walk like it? Do you act like it? Or do you let the devil kick you around some? 
If you let the devil kick you around, I got news for you. He'll keep doing it. The devil will harass you. He'll try to steal everything you got until you're in the grave. So you better get on top of him before he gets on top of you. And you better know that Jesus said right here that he's building his church on the, on the supernatural power of God and the supernatural revelation that he is the Christ. And we are his body. And when we go out of here, we go in the name of Jesus. You should be saying the name of Jesus every day, multiple times. You should be saying, get behind me, Satan, multiple times. However many times he comes. When you get that terrible thought, you need to say, get behind me, Satan. That's how he comes, right? I've said it before, but I'll say it again. He doesn't come with horns and a pitchfork and smoke coming out of his nose. You're not wrestling against flesh and blood. Everybody understand that, right? We're not wrestling against people. People have never been the enemy. Satan's been the enemy back then, and he's the enemy now. He's the enemy. He is the one that you resist. He is the one that you come against in the name of Jesus. He is the one that you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm healed. From the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. In the name of Jesus, I'm not taking that depression. In the name of Jesus, I'm not taking that thought. You come against Satan. I'm telling you the truth. You know what? You are the above average. You're in the above average classroom. There's much available to you. And the kingdom of God is, and I'll show you, is now within you. And you have potential beyond your wildest imaginations. You can either realize it and walk in it now or get to the judgment seat of Christ one day and have, and have it be shown to you all that, that, that you could have done. Because we're all going to end up there, believers, the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Amen? I don't see why Christians, you know, sometimes we walk around and, and we walk around like we're not ever going to have to stand before Christ. I know I'll stand before him. The Bible says not many of you, should, you shouldn't want to be a pastor unless you're called because there's a, there's a higher accountability. And you are people that Jesus died for. We're all going to end up at the same place. Amen? i got to read verse 19 again. This is better than getting the keys to the Ferrari. He says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What kingdom? God's kingdom. Who has the keys? According to Jesus. Do you have the keys? Look at this. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on the earth. Who are you binding? Good answer. Are you binding uh, Joe Biden? I'll make it equal. Are you buy, binding Donald Trump? Yeah, I'm equal. That makes it not a political message. Are you binding... You fill in the blank. Or are you binding the enemy who has always been your enemy? Satan, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church, but you got to take the keys. you got to know who you are in Christ. Whatever you bind on earth, does it, are we on earth? Does it say when you get to heaven you'll have binding power? No, you won't need it up there. He's not going to be up there. <laughs> right? 
Whatever thou shalt bind on the earth shall be bound in heaven. Just start binding Satan and start, just start, I don't even care if you completely understand it. Just start doing it. He has to listen to the words coming out of your mouth. So you don't have to understand it all right now, especially if you're just getting started. But I'll tell you what, you keep coming and you keep hanging out, you'll know, you'll start to get it. I can't tell you how many people said, you know, in the beginning, I'm just trying to figure it all out because it's all new stuff. And then all of a sudden it just clicked in me. So you got to you got to you got to want it. Do you want to do you want to get beat around by the devil? So whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. That means heaven's got your back. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? Whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. So we are actively functioning and working the kingdom of God. Right? Acts, Acts 10, 38 says that God the Father anointed Jesus, God the Son, with the Holy Spirit and power. There's a the trinity. God the Father anointed Jesus, that's the Son, with the Holy Spirit and power. Right? You have the trinity working together, and it says that Jesus went about doing good and healing all that were sick and oppressed of the what? Devil. Well, what's, what's, what's Jesus doing now? He, my Bible says he went up to heaven. And you know what he did? He, you know what he did? He sat down. He sat down. Where I come from, if one person sits down, that means another person is supposed to stand up. He sat down. You are his hands. You are his feet. You are his mouth. You carry the Holy Spirit within you. You have the keys. You have to do it. And when you do it, all heaven will back you up. So whatever it is you got going on in your life, whatever it is, if you've got any kind of illness trying to attack your body, come against that illness in the name of Jesus. Just come against it. Say, nope, it's not God's will for my life. I don't accept it. Now listen, now, listen now. It's, it's faith in confession, not faith in denial. This is important. If it's, if it's something attacking your body, you're not denying that it's there. It's there. You're denying its right to be there. So therefore, you do what God taught Abraham to do. Call things that are not as though they were. You speak the truth of God's word, the promise into that situation. And you do it every day, all of your life. That's how you build your house. You got to do your part. God will do his. If you walk around and tell everybody that, that you're sick, everybody, somebody wants to know, like a lot of Christians do it. They don't watch their words. A lot of believers, they'll hear a message like this and they'll think, oh, that name it, claim it, blab it group. Well, this is, this is how God taught us to do it. It was Jesus who said, speak to the mountain. He didn't say, tell everybody and their brother about your mountain. He said, speak to it, command it to be cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, and you'll have what you say. Amen. So stop saying what you have. And people do it completely backwards and all over the place, and then, and then they get mad at God. No, hook up with God. This is not a game. This isn't like learning memory verses and saying, oh, I know all these memory verses, and I've went to church now three weeks in a row now. I'm I'm good. No, that's, I'm glad you're doing that. No, you got to get the word from here to here. The longest 18 inches in your life. The hardest path. And that's one of the pastor's job is to get, get it from here into here. So you got to decide. Is Jesus the name above all names? Do you have the keys? Do you want to wait until you feel like you're super spiritual? What's feelings have to do with it? If you're moved by feelings, you're going you're gonna to 
be swayed by natural things. Do you know how many times I've seen God move the, a lot of great times? Didn't even feel like it. Didn't feel spiritual. One day, Leslie and I was uh, talking to a guy that came to the church. And, uh, um, like, I'm a little bit more laid back than, than what Leslie is. Leslie likes to push. She's stopping to hear what I'm going to say. She, she, likes to, she likes to push the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She's a go-getter. And I'm like, well, maybe they're not quite ready yet. You know, maybe I just better just give them some more time. And Leslie's like, well, have you ever heard of the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Praying in tongues. And they're like, what's that? And then she's already got me into it. <laughs> it's all right. Maybe sometimes we need pushed. And this one guy, we brought him up front right here, right here. And we I said, okay, receive the gift. That's how you, how do you get gifts? You just receive it. And we prayed, and, and sure enough, the Holy Spirit, according to the word of God, comes upon you. Didn't say, you're going to feel the gooseys. You might feel them. Who knows? You can go to an ACDC concert and feel gooseys. I hope not. You don't go there, but what's that have to do with anything? I'm not against feelings, but if you wait till you have a feeling, you're not believing the word. Because we walk by faith, not by sight or not by feeling. And so we're praying for this guy, right? And we're praying in the spirit. Honestly, I felt I might as well have been chewing on a piece of cardboard. I felt nothing. In my own self. But I know I'm praying in the tongues. I know I'm doing what the word said. And, 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 but you know what? I, never done, I had never done this before. And I never did it afterwards. But I just stopped. Because I honestly, I felt like the least spiritual ever. You remember where I'm going with this. And I, and I said, I said, did you feel anything? I don't know why I said that. Because I know you just said you don't have feelings. But I just... And he said, yeah, am I still standing or am I floating here? I said, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> it's not about feelings, is it? You know what Dad said time and time again when he comes in to praise and worship sometimes? Sometimes we have a, we have a, um, a, a bad day and it takes time to get kicked over, right? And he says, you know what I do? He says, I just lift up my hands. And I start in. And as I start in, then it comes. What's he saying? If he had waited until he felt like it, he might have missed the whole praise and worship and he would have missed an opportunity. Because all you got to do to get in the Holy, to, the, to the Spirit and the praise and worship is join in. Right. Just join in, Right? So i got to read verse 19 again. It's just so good. Because every time I read it, I get something different. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Who gives you the keys? Jesus. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Look at John 14, uh, 17. You want to grow spiritually? You want to get where you need to be? Um, get the word in you. Get the word in you. Read the word. Uh, you, you can watch ministers on TV. Uh, Sister Marsha gave me a list of all the ministers. I have to, get, I have to copy that off. But if you need the, the different uh, ministers that are word of faith, spirit filled, you can listen to them. You can get our CDs. We got over in that room back there, we got tons of CDs. Go grab a bunch of them and listen to them. You got to get the word in you. You've got to be a word lover. 
And you've got to flood your heart and flood your mind. And if you listen to mine, it's going to help you connect with me. A brother Terry's a, a truck driver. And we were putting out some of those uh, three or four parts uh, series. He, he'd take them and listen to them. And you know what it did? It connected him with me. Connected him with me. Connected me with him. Because you can only receive from who you honor. Right? And when Leslie first got saved, she, she got, back then it was cassette tapes, right? She got all the cassette tapes. And if I'd call her house, I could hear me preaching in the background. <laughs> she did that for a good solid year, right? She didn't need no husband then. She needed to fall in love with the Lord. I came later, right? <laughs> and honestly, but she did it. She did what she had to do. She wanted more, 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 more. And if you want more of God, that means something's got to go. Because there's only so many hours in a day. So days of our lives might have had to go. I don't know if you watched soap operas. Okay, she didn't. Something else. <laughs> I don't know. You know what the Lord told me when, when I, I was, uh, he was working on me to be a pastor and, get, and, and getting myself straight? I had a lot of straightening out, and I've still got a lot, too. But I'm not what I used to be. I'm not what I want to be yet. I'm somewhere in the middle going this way. And the only reason I'm going this way is my heart keeps me going that way and the Lord said you know um, he said I want you to don't watch um, football not football I don't want you to watch sports for a year I, f I feel embarrassed to tell you this but I was addicted to sports everything I think because when I was younger that's all I did and all my confidence was in playing sports it's where I built my life around and I was pretty good back in the younger days. I'm no good now, but back then. Although I did beat Leslie in golf the other day. <laughs> but I did hit off the senior tees, though. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> so, but anyway, um, he said, because what I would do, you know, at some certain times in the year, you got basketball and football, you got, and baseball comes in, you got all these sports, you got college. I liked it all. And I would plan my whole day around these sports events all the time. And the Lord said, I want you to give that to me for a year. I thought, ooh, okay, I'll do it. And I, and I did it for like a couple months, and then football season came close. And, 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 I, and I was hearing about how good the Dolphins were going to be that year. That's my team. Don't feel sorry for me. And, you know, Dan Marino, you know, hey, and... I started getting these thoughts. This is the year they're going to go to the Super Bowl and you're going to miss it. I'm just being transparent. And I caved in and started watching football. Failed. And you know what? I'm still waiting for the Dolphins to make the Super Bowl. <laughs> you know what I said? The devil is a liar. He's a liar. I don't know if they're ever going to make it. I hope they do. But anyway, so I had to start all over. I said, all right, Lord, I feel terrible. I'm weak. I'm no good. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Or as a Canadian says, I'm sorry. But anyway. And so... I'm going to try again. The second time I tried it, I did it. And you know what happened to me when I did it? I got set free. I still love sports. I still watch sports, but it does not affect me. I can take it or leave it. I don't have to build my life around it, but I could. You know, when you give something up and you give it, put it in its proper place, you enjoy it more. You enjoy it more. My son and I, we like the uh, North Carolina Tar Heels basketball team. That's the only one of our teams that really... I passed all my bad teams off to my son. All of them. <laughs> he took them all. 
But the Tar Heels will win championships once in a while. And they play, when they play Duke, it's like, okay, forget it. That's like the rivalry of all rivalries. And one, one uh, day, uh, Duke in uh, North Carolina was playing, and um, Dane was actually, my son Dane was actually over at his cousin's house, Daniel. And uh, um, it was like it was slow motion. North Carolina was up by like two points with like five seconds left. And the best player on the team for Duke goes, goes up to the three-point line, and we're like, uh, get out there. It's like slow motion. Guard him. And, and the defensive guy at North Carolina is like backing off of him. Like, oh. It was a nightmare. He, he, he drained that three. Duke won. And I mean to tell you, upset. This is before I, I did that uh, year thing. <laughs> upset. <laughs> and Dane and Daniel. Dane got so mad at Daniel because Daniel was like laughing in his face and jumping all around and acting like, you know, ah. Dane went home. He was supposed to spend the night <laughs> from Carlisle went home. And I remember uh, um, talking to the Lord about it because you got to talk to the Lord about everything. He said, it's, that's your fault for making that game that important to you. So we all got our own things, right? Whatever the Lord tells us to do, we need to do it. And then we'll be happy for it. And so look at um, John 14, verse 16. I'm about ready to close. I've got four minutes. John 14, verse 16. This is Jesus. He's about ready to go to the cross. So he's getting the disciples ready. He says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now that's the Holy Spirit, right? You'll read where he says that, but how long is the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, supposed to be with you? Forever. Forever. Not, when, not cease to be with you when you mess up, or when you make a mistake, or when you fail. The Comforter, the, the uh, definition would be helper. That's what the Holy Spirit is, helper, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener. Stand by. Someone to be with you forever. Look at this in verse um, 17. Even the Spirit of truth, that's the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Now I ask you, where is the kingdom of God? It's in you. That's why you can say, greater is he that's in me than he is in the world. That's why you can say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That's why you can say, get behind me, Satan. This is the advanced class. Because you are exceptional people with potential beyond you could even imagine. All of it's written in here. It's up to you to find it, right? That's all I have. Would you rise, please? One minute early. And so you might be in here and you say, well, that's like, you know, one of the few times I've heard a message like that. Well, you're on the right track. You've heard it. That's like probably the 500th time I preached a message like that. And that's some of you in here, that's like the 5,000th time that you've heard a message like that. And so if you hear it way more than, than what the next person, you're going to be better at it. So when you leave here, when you go about, the name of Jesus should be coming off of your lips. Amen? Amen? You should be binding and loosing. Bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. But listen, a lot of this stuff you do is just you and, and, and the Holy Spirit and, and, and Satan or whatever he's trying to do, right? Or circumstances. You don't, go, uh, you don't have to go around people who don't know what you're talking about because they're going to think you're crazy, right? You don't have to. And don't you dare, like, do it to a person, right? Don't get carried away. Who's the enemy? 
Satan. What you do to a person is you try to reach them with love. You don't bind them. You want somebody binding you? Right? Why'd you get me started? <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord God, that we have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I thank you, Lord, that your kingdom is without end. The earthly things pass away. They're temporary. But the spiritual things are eternal. The kingdom of God is eternal. And we are in that now. And that kingdom is within us. So, Lord, we go out of here with the authority of the name of Jesus. I'm just going to do it for this congregation, Lord. Satan, we bind you. We take authority over you. We recognize, we see you as the enemy. We see you as the troubler. And we bind you now in Jesus' name. And I thank you for setting us free. For who the Son sets free is free indeed. And we thank you, Lord, that we'll walk in this victory, Lord. Father, we know that we live in a fallen world, but we also know that we serve a risen Savior, and that's good enough for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.